Hobart, Tasmania, gateway to the Antarctic for the Asia-Pacific region. Over 21,000 people participated in the four-day Australian Antarctic Festival on the Hobart waterfront, double the number who attended the inaugural event in 2016, helping to consolidate it as one of Tasmania's major winter festivals. Our Antarctic connections are very well established, historic right through to present day, and they continue to be such an important part of Tasmania's economic and social fabric. More than 8,000 school children from nearly 200 schools across Tasmania, New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland had their painted plywood penguins displayed in Hobart's cruise ship terminal, owned and operated by the Tasmanian Ports Authority. Mac 2 is the centrepiece of Antarctic and cruise in Tasmania. Visitors from all over Australia and New Zealand and several Antarctic treaty nations enjoyed the midwinter sunshine, made possible with the help of 200 volunteers under the direction of Festival Director Paul Cullen. This whole thing could not happen unless you give up your time to make it happen. They ensured the smooth running of the event after 18 months of planning. Two Antarctic ships, the P&O Maritime icebreaker Aurora Australis, used by the Australian Antarctic Division to service its Antarctic bases, and the CSIRO's research vessel, The Investigator, opened their doors to the public. Nearly 7,000 people, including school children, toured the two ships over four days, including a group of 60 Chinese tourists. At Hobart Airport, the Royal Australian Air Force flew in one of its giant Boeing C-17 Globemaster freighters used to supply Australian Antarctic bases, attracting huge crowds with RAAF personnel proud to talk about their fleet. Antarctic historians conducted polar history walks along Hobart's waterfront, visiting significant sites in the city's long Antarctic history. The Australian Antarctic expedition set sail from here. The Tasmania Museum and Art Gallery hosted a photographic competition so open to entries from visitors to the Antarctic from around the world. First prize, $5,000. Attracting a record number of entries. For his photograph, Gen 2. Tasmanian artists painted one metre tall penguins 20 of them in the colourful colony, and all of them are now for sale. Kemla, the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, held the Philip Law Lecture, highlighting recent advances in understanding the Southern Ice Sheet. The Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies conducted an international symposium on climate change, featuring international speakers. Over 30 exhibitors packed the Princess Wolf Pavilion to showcase Antarctica and its wonders, including Tasmanian engineer Graham Elphinstone, who displayed the six and a half ton sledges made and designed in Tasmania, used to haul supplies across the vast distances in Antarctica. Also popular was a helicopter, essential for travel in the white southern continent. This is an AS350 squirrel. A model of Australia's new icebreaker, New Yena, was on display, and the Dutch shipbuilder Damon Shipyards was on hand to elaborate. Damon is incredibly excited and privileged to be building the new icebreaker for the Australian Antarctic Division. A keen attraction for all ages was the Lego model of the New Yena, built from over 117,000 pieces. Scientists and staff from the CSIRO and IMAS, the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies, opened their doors and showcased their work and research. The Shaw Preparatory School Choir flew in from Sydney to perform a concert, Great Scott, at St David's Church, dedicated to Antarctic explorer Sir Robert Falcon Scott. Huskies are synonymous with the heroic era of Antarctic exploration, and the festival culminated with the traditional Husky picnic at the Mawson's Huts Replica Museum. The Southern Huskies, we're naming our mascot Mawson today. And the public could take a journey back in time through the Replica Museum. 